Well, good morning, 4C Christian School. Uh, welcome to our chapel this week. It's Wednesday, April 29th. I'm here with Mr. Scott, our assistant principal, and Mrs. Ford, our music teacher. And our speaker today is Pastor Mike Maslin from 4C Bible Church. So we're glad he's with us today. And he's going to give us a, a, a talk a little bit, a little bit later. Um, but before we we start with that. I wanted to just read a poem this week. Um, and I was inspired by Mrs. Malinowski, our art teacher. She's been doing art lessons um, and I've been posting them on Facebook. So this week her art lessons are themed around being a superhero and how to draw superheroes. So I encourage you uh, after this or sometime this week or this weekend to head over to Facebook and check those out. They're really great. Um, and so she, her, her talk about superheroes inspired me and I found a poem about superheroes that I wanted to read to you. It's called, If I Was a Superhero by Sally Gray. If I was a superhero, I'd definitely fly, arms outstretched, racing birds in the sky. If I was a superhero, I'd have special powers, like extra strong legs for jumping over towers. If I was a superhero, I'd save all the oceans with my secret and magical cleaning up potions. If I was a superhero, I'd save all the trees and the mountains and rivers, the birds and the bees. If I was a superhero, I'd help all the poor, give them food and make them hungry no more. If I was a superhero, I'm sure you'll agree the world would be better because of me. I really liked that poem, not only because it went along with Mrs. Malinowski's art lessons this week, but because it talked about being a superhero and helping and helping the world uh, be a better place. So hopefully that inspires you. And what I'd love is if you actually wrote a poem of, about you, you being a superhero yourself and um, or a poem or a story it doesn't have to be a poem, but something, a little short story or a few sentences about if you were a superhero, what would your superpowers be and how you would use them to make the world a better place or even make 4C Christian School a better place. I would love that. I would love to hear, to read those and see those. So if you are so inspired by Mrs. Malinowski's art lessons and this poem, draw a, a picture of a superhero and write a little short story or poem about it. And I would love to see them. Send them to me, ask your parents if that's okay, or maybe an older brother or sister who could help you get that back to me um, by email. Um, I would love to see those pictures and I would love to hear those poems and stories about it, uh, especially about how to make the world a better place and, and how to make our school a better place. One more reminder before we get started with a song today, and that's um, next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. And, um, you know, if we were at school, we could bring our, our teacher a flower or a special treat or a piece of candy or something, but unfortunately we can't do that. So I know your teachers would love it if you would draw them a little picture or write them a little note about how much you appreciate them. And um, let me give you some suggestions. Um, teachers love specifics. So, you know, it's nice to say, I appreciate you, but tell them why you appreciate them. Uh, maybe there was something funny that happened in class. You remember a fun day in class that your teacher did something and it, you really remember that. Tell them about that. I remember when, you know, they love that. Teachers would love to hear that. Or if your teacher is really good at singing, uh, tell them that. Thank them for being a good singer. Or if they're artistic and draw really well, thank them for that. Um, maybe your teacher is really good at technology and they have the latest apps and the latest digital activities for you to do in class. Thank them for that because those things take time to plan. Maybe your teacher is really funny. He tells jokes, good or bad, good mm -hmm. or bad jokes. Thank them for that. Or maybe they explain things really well. Maybe there was something you were struggling with in class and you, you weren't getting it and your teacher took the time to go over to you and really explain that better so that you understood it. Thank them for that. And um, maybe they're really good at uh, sharing Bible verses and talking about, you know, in the, in the Bible lessons, the things that they do there that you like. So thank your teachers. Send them a picture or a little note and be specific. Tell them specifically, you know, what you appreciate about them. Um, and I'd love to see those too. So you can send me those too. So Mrs. Ford's gonna lead us in a song. All right. 
Everybody everywhere. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. Mr. Scott's going to say a few words. Hello, everybody. Mr. Scott here. Uh, again, I definitely miss seeing everybody. And um, what, a, what a wonderful song um, that Ms. Ford just let us in, that Jesus is alive. And uh, there's a scripture that says um, that I will never leave you nor forsake you, and I will be with you even to the end of the age. And uh, that is just a great comfort to know that during this time that Jesus is alive. So if you, you know, you're feeling uh, low or lonely, uh, you're not because Jesus is alive and he's definitely well and he's definitely present. So I just want to encourage you today um, to know that, that Jesus is with you always. And the next song that we're going to sing this morning is called, It's So Good to Know, No Matter Where I Am, That You Will Never, Never Leave Me, Lord. And that was something that I found a lot of comfort in. The sun is shining today. We've had a lot of rain this month. Get outside, play in your yard, draw with sidewalk chalk on your driveway, on your sidewalk. Enjoy the sunshine today. We need to have that refreshment, but it is so good to know that no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, that God will never leave us. All right. I will never be lost. I won't be all alone. You found me, saved me, made me alright. I will never be lost. I won't be all alone. You guide me, change me, find my way around. It's all Be all alone. You found me, 
Thank you, Mrs. Ford. And now Pastor Mike Maslin is going to give us our talk today. All right. Well, hello, Forsey Christian School. It's so good to be with you uh, for this chapel. One of the great things about being at a Christian school is chapel. And we can talk about the difference that Jesus makes in our life. And so even though we can't be at school and things aren't quite the way they normally are, we can still have chapel and remind each other about the difference that Jesus makes in our life. And today I want to talk with you about something, and our older kids are going to be able to read this word, but we're going to explain it. But when I throw it up on the screen, say it with me. Motivation. Okay, motivation. And for maybe our younger kids, what does motivation mean? It just means working hard. Okay, so we're going to talk about working hard here in chapel. And I, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to a verse, and we're utilizing technology here, Colossians 3.23. So I'm going to hold this up here so that you can turn to Colossians 3.23. And we're going to read that at the very end here in just a few minutes, okay? So Colossians 3.23. So the reason we're talking about hard work and motivation is because I imagine that being a student and you're at home, okay, and having to do a lot of your work from home, okay, is probably challenging. So raise your hand right where you are, okay? Even if you're in your family room or your kitchen table, wherever you are, if you have had a challenge at all in the last month with motivation, raise your hand. Okay, all, all four of us are raising our hands and I can feel you through the computer. Many, many hands are in the air. Motivation can be hard, especially because things look and feel so differently. You're not at school and your teacher's not walking around the classroom as you're doing your work and those kinds of things. So working hard, can be a challenge. So I think this message that I think God's going to give us today is very important for you and all of us really in this time because uh, hard work looks different when you're at home and things are so different. So I have a question for you and that is who is someone that you know who was a very hard worker? Think in your mind who is someone that you know who is a very hard worker? Maybe it's a parent uh, or maybe it's uh, actually maybe it's a friend at school, perhaps. Uh, maybe it's somebody in history that you're thinking about who uh, demonstrated being a very hard worker. OK, so you have somebody in your mind who's a very hard worker. And certainly there are a lot of great examples of a hard worker. But the person I want to talk about that is a perfect example of a hard worker. If you can imagine here in chapel, we're going to talk about, talk about Jesus. And Jesus was an extremely hard worker when he was here on earth. Now, uh, does anyone know what was Jesus's first job before he was a preacher, before he had his ministry? What was Jesus' first job? And some of you might be saying Jesus was a carpenter, and you would be correct. And a carpenter is someone who works with wood and makes furniture, tables, and chairs, and those kinds of things. And did you know that as a carpenter, especially back before they had power tools and everything, when Jesus was a carpenter, okay, for the first 30 years of his life, it was very hard work. Most of Jesus' day was probably spent sanding wood, just doing this really hard over and over and over again 
to get the wood shaped just perfectly so that it would uh, do well with his work. So that was the first uh, job that Jesus had. But then his most notable job is, is that after he was a carpenter and it was time for him to begin his ministry and he was a preacher and he went around sharing uh, the love of God and the message of God and ultimately what was his work it tells us in the Bible was to seek and save the lost and that was to die on the cross for our sins. And so that was Jesus's work. You know, Jesus had a job and his job, his work that he wanted to do was to die on the cross for our sins. Now, that's the most important news in the whole wide world of all time, through all history. And we're talking today about you as students and, and all of us, we have different work and tasks and assignments that we need to do, okay? So I don't wanna confuse them, but there is so much that we can learn from Jesus and his example of hard work. You know, how did Jesus know? Here's a question. How did Jesus know when his work was done, when his work was finished? In the same way that you might know your work on an assignment is done when you hand it in and you did a good job on it, best you could do, right? Jesus knew that his work was done when he died on the cross. And what, was Jesus's, what were Jesus' words right before he breathed his final breath? You remember? Three words in English. It is finished. He said, I have finished my work. I have done a good job, right? That a very hard work. So Jesus was a hard worker, a perfect example of a hard worker. He finished the job well. But what do you think would have happened? And how would life be different for us if... Let's say as Jesus, remember, he was carrying his cross on the way to Calvary, the mountain, the hill that he was uh, crucified on, as he was carrying that heavy cross, and as, you know, he was being mocked and beaten in the streets, you know, and he's walking to, the, to Calvary, what if right in the middle of that, he had said, you know what, I'm done with this. Angels, come on down. Okay, well, wipe out these Roman guards, the Sanhedrin, these Jews that are trying to, to have me killed. Okay, wipe them out. I've got a soccer game I want to finish with my disciples. You know, it was a great soccer game. You know, it, the, the score was tied three to three the last time we left off. I want to finish that game. I, what would have happened? We, Jesus wouldn't have finished his work. He wouldn't have finished the job well, right? And now obviously that didn't happen because Jesus was a perfect servant of the Lord when he was here on earth. And so he did finish his work well, and he did die on the cross for our sins. But here's the amazing thing. You know, Jesus had the power to do that if he wanted to. He could have finished his work early. He could have done a halfway job. He could have called down those angels and had them wipe out all his challenges and the pain, the difficulty that he was going through. And work can sometimes be hard, even our work. But Jesus finished the job and he finished it well. If you've had a hard time following along through the technology, if you wanna write down one thing to learn from today's message, I encourage you to write this one down and remember it. Is it for me as a Christian, okay? I wanna work hard because Jesus worked hard for me. I wanna work hard because Jesus worked hard for me, right? And so um, let's turn to Colossians 3.23 and read this as we finish up. And so Colossians 3.23, you can write it down later if you haven't been able to get to it and you can look at it, but we're going to read it out. I'm going to say it, is that whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as serving the Lord, not men. So what God wants us to do, and following the example of Jesus in doing this, what God wants us to do is he wants us to work hard in our hearts, serving him first. I want to do a good job because he showed me how to work hard and finish the job. Now, we uh, depend, and all of us depend, on authorities in our life, whether it's a boss or a teacher or a parent, to give us a task to do, right? So I'm gonna pick on some teachers here at 4C Christian School, maybe for elementary school, let's say Miss Siegel. And for Miss, uh, for, uh, let's see, middle school, Mr. Stewart, okay? They give you an assignment to do, okay? And they ha you have that assignment before you, okay? And they give you a deadline, right? And that deadline says, if I don't finish it by now, by that point, then something bad's going to happen. I'm not going to get a good grade. I'm not going to be able to do well. And there'll be a consequence, right? And those 
motivations are good. And God gave us those kind of things to help keep us moving in the right direction and working hard. But God calls us to an even greater form of motivation. And that's a motivation that starts in our hearts because we want to serve the Lord. Remember Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, whatever you do, even a very basic assignment at school, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as serving the Lord, not men. So you're not, as a student, you're not primarily serving or working for Miss Siegel or Mr. Stewart, or even when your parent gives you, your mom or dad gives you a chore to do, something like that. You are, you want to respect them and obey them because God's given them that place in, that, in your life, and that's a good thing. But more than anything, we want to serve the Lord in our heart. And so we want to work well. Remember, Jesus worked hard and finished the job for us. And one little thought I had for you, and just to share, this is kind of some advice on motivation and hard work. And I'm remembering being a student, and I hope you take this to heart, is, is that when you finish the job, and I know Ms. Visley and Ms. Ford and Mr. Scott will agree with me on this, is that when you finish your work and you do a good job, there's a good feeling that you have. There's a good feeling that you have in your heart, even, especially if you do it for the Lord. There's a good feeling. And God gave us that feeling when we do our good work well, when we do work well. And so that's a good feeling. And so we want to aim for that feeling and try to get that feeling because we've done a good job. And uh, we'll be blessed as we do that as well. And there's could be a whole more, lot more messages on this. You know, God gave us work. He designed work and work is good, even when it's a little challenging because it makes us better, all those things. A lot more that God has to say about this. But for today, I wanted to encourage you from God's word to say, hey, work hard and be motivated. Serve him in your heart. Follow Jesus's example because he finished his job all the way. And so let's do that with all the work that we have. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for each student at 4C Christian School. Lord, I know that I imagine that being at home and doing our work in a different sort of a way um, can bring us open to a lot of distractions and a temptation to not do our work as well. But Lord, we want to follow your example. Thank you that you died on the cross for our sins. Thank you that you finished the work. Thank you that you didn't go halfway. And I pray that that would inspire us to do the same in our work. Thank you for each student. I pray that you would bless them right where you're at. Bless the teachers next week for Teacher Appreciation Week. We thank you, Lord, for that reminder for Ms. Visley. We want to be grateful people. Um, and so help uh, all the students here to be grateful for all the blessings, including their teachers. Thank you, Lord, for your word and this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that's it for us today, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, Mrs. Ford, go ahead. I was just, just going to add something to what Pastor Mike was saying. Even when no one's looking, ah. God expects us to do a good job. And this is especially true right now when we're at home and maybe the teacher, you know, isn't doing the same thing as what she would do in the classroom, walk past your desk and double check on things. But even when no one's looking, God expects us to do our very best. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.